What's going on guys and welcome back to phase two of the spin wheel park and as you can see I've done a lot of off-camera work. I've added in a monorail with a few stations as well as some facilities and whatever and I made sure that the guests were satisfied with the accommodations because boy were they picky and fussy and all that crap. But anyway, we managed to get ten more creatures like the Indoraptors for example. We got two of them because why not? You know, and we got like uh, the Elasmosaurs, I think, last episode as well. So yeah, really cool creatures. But yeah, if you enjoy this series and want more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. But without further ado, let's begin adding more creatures. All right, as you can see here, we only have 52 specimens left. We're going to do this three more times until we're down to 22 species. So, who is species number 21? Kentrosaurus? Okay. So now for Kentrosaurus, since we have Ceratopsians in one enclosure, we should put these guys in like a separate enclosure. We should start another herbivore enclosure. They won't get on with Gigantoraptor, I know that for a fact. So, why don't we just throw them like... Maybe in here we'll have like a Jurassic Tour. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Jurassic Tour. So what we'll do, I figured since we got Stegosaurs, they won't get along with the Ceratopsians or anything like that. Alright, so we'll have a watering hole in the middle. We'll have a bunch of forest like over here. And then we should be good to go. So let's get the hatchery out of the... What's it, the Indoraptor? No, it's this. It's this enclosure here. All right, let's get that out of here and move this over to here. There we go. And we can throw in our first herbivore in here, Kentrosaurus. Let's go. All right, so Kentrosaurus will get a mixture of Camp Cretaceous and Evolution, depending on what the random ends up getting. There we go. Let's hatch up the Kentrosaurs. So we got Evolution, Camp Cretaceous, Camp Cretaceous, Evolution, and Evolution. So three Evolution and two Camp Cretaceous, it looks like. All right, so what do these guys like to eat? Hold on. Ground fiber? All right, that's not too bad. There we go. All right, let's release our first creature in this new enclosure, the Kentrosaurus. small these ones are compared to the Camp Cretaceous ones. That's pretty awesome, actually. Alright, let's move on to the second creature of the episode. And creature number two, what will it be? Another pterosaur, Sungaripterus. Alright, we'll throw them in with the Geosternbergias. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw them in there. So Sungaripterus. We'll throw you in here. So how many pterosaurs do we have left? I don't think we've ever used Pteranodon. We used Dimorphodon. We used Quetzal. I don't think we used Thanatos Draken yet. All right, we'll throw them in. We'll throw all six of them in. You know what this enclosure's missing? Shrubbery. We'll just throw a bunch of shrubbery in here. All right, we're good. We're good. How are the Geosternbergias doing? They're doing good. All right, let's synthesize those, hatch those up. All right, let's release the Sungaripterus. All right, that's creature number two done. Let's move on to creature number three. All right, creature number three is Corythosaurus. Okay, you know what? We can throw them in with the Kentrosaurs. This is pretty easy. All right, Corythosaurus. We'll throw that in here. There we go. So these guys have been relatively quick. All right, so so far we've got Kentrosaurus. Hold on, what are these guys like for food? Ground fiber? Okay, so I don't have to add any more vegetation in. I'll just add more vegetation as time goes on, as we add in more herbivores. That's kind of the plan of action. All right, let's release Kentrosaurus. Oh, sorry, Kentrosaurus. Corythosaurus. All right, Corythosaurus.
All right, that should be Corythosaurus all set. Let's move on to creature number four. All right, creature number four. Let's go. Diplodocus? All right, we can throw them in here as well. This has been relatively easy. This might be a relatively short video. All right, Diplodocus. Let's modify them. Let's get four of them. Let's get four of them just so we have more of them. Kind of like what we did with the Apatosaurs, in a way. Oh, well, speaking of Apatosaurus, it's getting added into Prehistoric Kingdom at some point, as well as Brontosaurus. You know, the concept of having Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus be two separate species is a great concept. I like it. I really do. All right, what are these guys like? Tall fruit. All right, we can give them tall fruit. All right, so we want fruit, tall fruit. There we go. There we go. That'll be their food. All right, let's add in Diplodocus. All right, so we got Corythosaurus in here. We got that. All right, Diplodocus will take relatively quickly. So we'll wait for Diplodocus before we move on to creature number five, I think. Oh, look at that. Social animation from the Corythosaurus. Nice. All right, let's release Diplodocus. Our second sauropod, I do believe. The first being Dreadnoughtus. No, wait. The first is Nigersaurus. So this would be the third. All right, so those guys will take a little bit. So while we wait for them to be released, let's move on to creature number five. Creature number five is... Moros Intrepidus? All right, let me just make sure that was... Yep, that was five, okay. All right, Moros Intrepidus, we could save some space by adding them in here. But, you know what? We'll make a relatively small enclosure for them. So Moros Intrepidus could probably go in here. I'll make a relatively small enclosure just for them. And I don't won't I won't add any shrubbery just so we can see them. Because they are relatively tiny. You know what? I can work with that. I can work with sand. Alright. Let's throw that in, and then we'll get the viewing gallery or something like that. Or a viewing gallery. Alright, where should we put it? We'll put it right here. So this will be the Moros Intrepidus enclosure. Relatively small enclosure, just for them. Alright. We'll throw that in. I don't know if we'll have a goat feeder. We'll just throw that in anyway. Should we add some forest in? Just so they can have some privacy. We'll add like a small patch of forest. Yeah, small patch of forest here. And then we'll, um... What should I do after that? Oh, like, get the hatchery going. Alright, we're... How are we going to fit it? Oh, we never we never released the other two Diplodocus. Oh, crap. I forgot about that. All right, let's... You know what? We'll just add in another hatchery. That's all. And then we'll remove it once the Moros Intrepidus have been released. All right. Where did I put it? Okay, look for a small sand enclosure. There it is. All right. We'll throw in another Biosyn hatchery. Obstructed, obstructed... How are we going to do this? In water, terrain constraints. Oh my god. How are we going to do this? Hmm. I could release them via airlift. You know what? We'll just do that. Ah, my god. Okay. All right. Let's get Moros Intrepidus because this enclosure is too small for a hatchery. So that's what we'll do instead. There we go. So Moros Intrepidus will probably be released afterwards. So I'll just release them via airlift just to make it easier. All right, so the Diplodocus, the other two Diplodocus have been released. All right, let's release these via airlift. I don't really have a choice. All right, there's going to be six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's all six of them being placed. In the meantime, while we wait for those to be transported, let's move on to creature number six. And creature number six is... Ceratosaurus. Okay, alright, cool, cool. So for Ceratosaurus, where can we put them? Because they'll fight everything else. 
So we need to put them in a separate enclosure. You know, we'll put it next door. Or will that be all of them? I think one is coming back, so I think there's still one more because there are six of them. Yeah, there we go. Let's speed that up until we get them all. I hate how they just stand there until one of them's put down. Like, are you just gonna stand there or are you gonna transport the Moros? Look, it's only a tiny thing. I love how they use smaller helicopters for, like, smaller dinosaurs and the bigger helicopters for bigger dinosaurs. I love how they do that. Alright, that's all of them done. Let's resume that. Move this building. We'll put it here. We'll put it here. And then we'll put in the path going through here. So we can put the ceratosaurs in here. You know what I forgot to put in? Viewing galleries, or viewing domes, even. We'll throw some in right now. Alright, that should be good. Alright, without further ado, let's release the Ceratosaurs. Alright! So that's creature number six, I believe. Let's move on to creature number seven. All right, and creature number seven, what will it be? Not the Saurus, okay. All right, we'll have to add like a, another lagoon for them. We'll probably put like a smaller lagoon just for these guys. All right, let's do that, let's do that. All right, we'll put this like over here. Make it big enough where they can swim around and do whatever they want. All right, so that should be good enough for the not the Saurus. Now let's get the Lagoon Hatchery out of here and put it over here. And then we need a Marine Fish Feeder. There we go. We'll add all six Nothosaurus in here. So depending on how Nothosaurus, how long Nothosaurus takes... Let's see, how long are you gonna take? 27 seconds? Alright, we've got some time. While we wait, let's move on to creature number 8. Alright, creature number 8, what will it be? Tropianathus, okay. Alright, we can add that in quickly. Alright, let's go into the aviary and add that in. Alright, Tropionathus. Let's go. I think we got Tapajara in the last episode, so we don't really have to worry about that. So we'll only add the two, or should we add four of them? We'll add four of them in. Let's go. Alright, let's release the Nathosaurs. Oh, we got a Lux one. That's awesome. I wonder if we got a... What's it? A Camp Cretaceous skin? I wonder if we got the Camp Cretaceous skin. We'll have to see. Alright, let's see what we got. So, Champlain Valley, Chalcarana, Great Sandy Desert, Paltrana, Mangrove Forest, Paparana, Gambian River Bass, and Rana. We got the 2022 skin. That's awesome. And the sixth one is Yukon River, Rana. Alright. Nothosaurus has been released. Let's uh, hatch up the Tropios so we can fill this place up with pterosaurs. We got Geosternbergia and the Sungaripterus. Even though we can easily throw them in with the Dimorphodons, but whatever, since they're much smaller. All right, we'll wait for these to hatch up and then we'll move on to creature number nine. All right, Tropionathus, let's go. Alright, so that's the first one. Alright, while we wait for those to release, let's move on to creature number 9. Creature number 9, or 29 in this case, what is it? Oranosaurus? Okay, alright. You know what? To add more diversity to the, uh, what's it, the Dreadnoughtus enclosure? We could probably throw it in there. Yeah, alright, this is in the Serratos enclosure. Yeah, okay, let's move that over to here. Alright, let's release Oranosaurus. Just so we could have more variety in the enclosure. Alright, what do Oranosaurus typically like? Ground fruit? There should be ground fruit in there. Since there's tall fruit in there. Alright, let's randomize that like we did with the Kentros. Alright, all four of them are being added in. They're going to take a little bit. While we wait, let's move on to the final creature. And the final creature of the episode is... 
Segasaurus. All right, cool, cool. Now these guys are relatively small. You know, we should probably put them in this enclosure. I don't think they'll harm any of the herbivores, so we should be good to go. You know what, we'll add like a, a feeder over here. That's what we'll do. We'll add a feeder here so they can see the... I don't even think there'll be a problem for the Microceratus, if I'm gonna be honest. All right, we'll put another feeder in front so we can add the Seggy Sores in there. And now let's release the Oranosaurs. What do we got? Camp Cretaceous, Evolution, Camp Cretaceous, and Evolution. All right, we got half and half. Awesome. So that's Oranosaurus being added in. All right. Let's get rid of this and move this over to the small herbivore enclosure. All right, if we can fit it anywhere, that is. May have to go with the forest again. All right, cool. All right, Segasaurus should be relatively quick. Let's add that in. All right, let's release that. I don't think we really have to worry about these guys terrorizing the herbivores. I don't think so, anyway. All right. So that's the next 10 creatures released. Now we're up to 30 species in total. And with that, that is going to have to wrap it up for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.